To discuss, let's bring in Ford Fisher. He's a journalist who has spent his career following extremist groups. Welcome, Ford. I'll ask you the same question that the president was asked. Do you see white nationalism as a rising threat around the globe? I mean, of course, this was probably the uh, highest fatality sort of situation that has occurred uh, sort of explicitly in the name of uh, ethno-nationalism, specifically white nationalism. Uh, that we've seen recently. What Trump's comment sort of echoes to me is uh, post Charlottesville, he said that there was a, a, hate, a display of hate and bigotry on many sides, on many sides, but he refused to call out initially white nationalists, Nazis, specifically by name. This is sort of in contrast to one of his big criticisms of President Obama, which is that he felt that Obama wouldn't use the term um, uh, radical Islamic extremism. So when the terrorist is a uh, is of the Muslim faith, then he's very adamant about using that specifically, calling it out by name and attacking that adamantly. Uh, but then in the case of white nationalism, he tends to sort of condemn the act, condemn the violence. But when it comes to the ideology itself, he seems to kind of brush it off as uh, not the biggest deal in the world. Such an interesting point. Um, the president was apparently mentioned in the 70 page manifesto that this guy wrote. Um, how much of a leader like Donald Trump is I don't know, even say indirectly responsible, or does does he provide any fuel for some of the people who carry out these acts? So I read the entire manifesto, unfortunately. It wasn't a great, uh, a great read. But um, he does have one reference to Donald Trump in it, where he basically says that he sees Trump as a symbol for white people, but he doesn't see him as a leader on policy. So he likes the idea of sort of the populist movement that he thinks is represented by Trump, that perhaps Trump has kind of moved the ball in their direction, but that he doesn't see uh, Trump or really anybody as a leader. It kind of advocates this idea of uh, leaderless resistance, that he's hoping to inspire other people who aren't affiliated with groups or political parties. Uh, this shooter sort of rejected conservatism outright. Uh, he called himself a fascist, but that he doesn't want to have a part of any particular group or political movement. Even Le Pen uh, in France, he described as uh, not sort of extreme enough because uh, she's not willing to be explicitly racial in her nationalism. So this was a shocking attack in terms of the scale, its location. It really came by surprise and all the planning and coordination around it. What really stood out to you in terms of patterns of attacks of this kind also? I mean, I think that uh, the internet is probably the biggest thing that uh, has sort of an interesting element here. So he posted ahead online uh, several links to the manifesto to make sure that people were able to see it. And he posted a link to his Facebook and basically told uh, followers of his on 4chan, uh, basically, watch here, I'm going to be live. And so he had a GoPro uh, that was live broadcasting the entire shooting. So people were able to watch the entire thing. And I think what was fascinating and scary is that people were egging him on. In the comments, there were people who wrote things uh, to the effect of, wow, that's really impressive uh, aim, uh, especially under a situation of stress and adrenaline. Uh, somebody said, we did it, 4chan. So uh, while not all of the comments were like that, and it can't be uh, you know, a condemnation of every single person who uses that particular online forum, uh, the fact remains that there are people who, while not uh, violent themselves, are egging on people to commit acts of violence like this. And how crucial is that online presence to white supremacism as a movement? I think that uh, online move. Uh, the internet basically allows these online movements to form where you get you end up with people in echo chambers where uh, in many cases they're deplatformed from Facebook, Twitter, whatever, and they end up in more extreme wings of the internet, 4chan, 8chan, Gab, and they find people who are not going to offer any kind of resistance. If someone posts on Facebook uh, something explicitly racist, people will tend to push back and say, you know, you're really wrong about that. Uh, but if they find a community where pretty much everyone homogeneously is uh, in an echo chamber is even like pushing to see who can be the most racist or the most offensive. That's how you end up with people who get radicalized. And oftentimes people say, you know, well, it's just a joke or it's just memes. But, you know, every now and again, you end up with somebody like this. How do you see the warning signs? I mean, I guess literally people writing online that they're going to, to do these things. He told people on the Internet going uh, that he was going to do this. So I guess what I would say to anybody who encounters uh, something like that online is don't don't take it as just a joke, right? The fact that somebody is, uh, you know, using a cartoon uh, or referencing uh, uh, different sorts of meme culture or popular culture uh, and what they're talking about doesn't mean that they're not actually dangerous. So egging them on, uh, while it might seem funny to a certain select few, 
uh, could literally prove fatal to, to others. Now, you're doing an amazing job of tracking this stuff online. Do you get the sense that law enforcement is as in tune with what's happening in some of these sites? I think in this case, it's really difficult because it, it's international, right? I don't know that uh, that people, that police in New Zealand could track uh, something that's going on on 4chan that primarily is based in the United States. Uh, of course, everybody on the outlet is, is anonymous, so it, it would be very difficult to tell, but I, I suspect that primarily the people who were egging him on were American. Um, so uh, police, t law enforcement tend to be pretty good at tracking online movements uh, when they're a little bit more in the mainstream, when they have names attached to them, when it's a little easier to identify people. Uh, but something like this, I think, was uh, very difficult. I'd be very su surprised if the police saw the live stream while it was happening. Mm -hmm. Ford Fisher, he is a, a journalist who has spent his career following extremist groups. And Ford, thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you.